Good morning, everyone. On the last video, I showed you how to upgrade your TASCAM 788 with, a, with an SD card reader. Uh, now we want to talk about the routing capacities, and I want to give you uh, some advice of, of the basic operations. It's pretty much to cover. I don't know, maybe I have to make uh, several videos, but um, yeah, let's start with um, the device itself. So um, <clears throat> you may think that um, this device uh, contains uh, different parts. Or let's say different units. The first part is the input part. You may already know this. Uh, another part is the uh, mixing capacities and the routing options with the uh, eight channels. Uh, another part is the recording device with uh, the possibility to record eight tracks uh, together. And uh, another part may be the output device, which is pretty interesting. And um, yes, um, let's start with the input device. I guess you already know this. So this device has got four mono inputs. You can use them as a line or microphone inputs. And the fourth input over here has got a little switch. So you can um, you can uh, select whether you want to have uh, a low or high impedance input on input D. Uh, high impedance means that you can plug in a electric guitar directly and record it clean. So you can use the internal uh, effect machines. You have got two effect, um, effect uh, sections built in here. Um, to um, yeah, to, to 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 use overdrive and, and something like that. I won't recognize. I won't um, use the uh, effect units for an e guitar. I'm a guitarist myself, and I can say it's not. I, I wouldn't recommend. I I, I wouldn't do this. <laughs> it's just not good enough. Um, so take a look at uh, the four mono inputs. If you want to use the inputs with a microphone, you see, uh, you have to push the gain really really high. Something about this. Uh, if you want to use a room mic, for example, you have to go even higher. And in those cases, um, those uh, microphone preamps here can get pretty noisy. So if you want to use room mics, you should consider using an external microphone preamp. Um, and keep in mind that this, that this unit doesn't have a, a phantom power. So if you want to use room mics, maybe it's better to use a condenser microphone. And in that case, you will have to use an external microphone with uh, Phantom power supply, too. Okay, um, um, those uh, jacks over here are uh, standard jacks. You've got four mono input, like I told you, and you've got a, a stereo input called AUX input. Those inputs are balanced inputs, although they are standard jacks and not XLR. You can use an adapter from standard jack, uh, balanced standard jack. This is a stereo one, as you can see, to uh, XLR. And um, yeah, connect your um, microphones in that way. Just plug it in. Um, and you see that the four mono inputs has got gain controls. So the stereo input called out, out input doesn't have a, a gain trimmer. So you have to uh, adjust your volume here on your instrument that you will plug in here. Maybe you've got a keyboard or a laptop or a CD player, MP3, whatsoever. Um, there is no analog uh, volume control on the Tascam. Okay. Uh, in total, so you have got six inputs. And you can route those six inputs freely to the control section, uh, which has eight um, channels, as you can see. Uh, so there is no physical connections, uh, let's say, between input A and uh, the first uh, control, uh, the first um, channel over here. Um, before we take a look at that, let's power the device up. Mm, I like the LEDs. Here you got it. On this device, we've got version 2.0.2. This is the last one. Uh, you can still get EEPROMs with a new, um, with new, uh, with a new fir firmware. And um, yes, the version two has got um, some um, upgrades. One of them is that you can use a 64 gigabyte SD card here, which is pretty handy. Uh, like always, it scans drives and uh, it's reading a song. Or if the SD card is new, it will make four partitions. Uh, and then it will make a song. It always called the first song, song one, obviously. I've got a, a 32 gigabyte SD card here. So I've got four um, partitions with uh, eight gigabyte each. But like I said, you can use a 64 gigabyte uh, SD card also. Okay, what we've got here is uh, the first channel uh, is uh, still connected to um, uh, input A. Maybe I've done this before. Um, to uh, connect a channel, you just... Um, yeah, select uh, the push the select button that can above the channel and use one of the input uh, buttons uh, above. So if I use input A, 
input A now is connected to channel 2. But I can, of course, uh, connect the input A also to another channel. Let's say it's channel 3. Just select the, uh, push the select button and put input A. And now you see channel 3 is connected to M input A. And channel 1, if you uh, push the select button again, is disconnected. There is, uh, other, there is no uh, connection uh, on input A because we changed it to input A. Uh, Three, and now the input one is uh, the channel one is empty. Okay, um, you can also push uh, input A without pushing anything else, and he shows you that it's connected to input three now. Okay, um, yeah, you can do this with every input channel. Um, if you um, select the uh, aux inputs, which is a stereo input, you remember. Uh, let's do this. So I select uh, the input ch channel, no, the channel one, and use the in aux input. Then he automatically chooses the both uh, inputs one and two uh, as a stereo input, and he links those two ch uh, channels to um, to a stereo channel. What does it mean? Uh, if this uh, of the if this uh, of if those two channels um, are linked, um, then only uh, the first channel uh, will control the volume, and um, the other one, uh, yeah, is paired. You can say uh, on a digital device, um, you the, the the third fader would move with the other one, but you don't have motorized faders here, so just use uh, channel uh, channel one faders, and channel two is out of control if you want to say so. Um, you can, of course, uh, disconnect this stereo link by just pushing both uh, of those select buttons right now. So, uh, now <clears throat> channel 1 is only controlling the first input of AUX input, let's say it's the left uh, side of the stereo input, while channel 2 is still connected to the AUX input. You can see this, but now channel 2 controls the right channel of the stereo input. Okay, I hope that's clear. Um, so you have got a stereo. Uh, so now the stereo input is um, is mono. It is rooted in mono. <laughs> left channel to uh, the left input channel to uh, control channel one, and the right input channel to control channel two. Here, this is pretty handy if you want to use uh, uh, stereo input uh, as mono inputs too. That's possible. Okay, uh, let's talk about uh, channel eight here. Channel seven and eight, I have to say, this one is a stereo input. So if you route the stereo inputs here to the channel seven and eight, let's do this. Okay, then uh, with this fader, you control both inputs, the uh, left and right side of the stereo inputs. Okay, it's a stereo input to a stereo fader. Okay, not so difficult to understand. But of course, you can also use the stereo input as a, with a mo uh, stereo channel with a mono input, not so fast. Um, just select the channel and let's say we use uh, input A again. Now you've got uh, input A on a stereo channel uh, and you can use it as uh, any other mono channel too. So right now you've got seven channels uh, because the 8 one is uh, yeah, not used. We use uh, the 7 and 8 one as a mono input. You cannot put two mono inputs to uh, the stereo channel here. You see, now you've got Oh, of course you can. Oh, that's new to me. Very, very impressive. So you can use the uh, uh, channel seven and eight with two mono inputs too. Uh, now channel A is uh, the left side, uh, channel seven, and input B is the right side, uh, channel eight. Okay, pretty handy. Um, you can route every input to every channel, uh, but the stereo input only routes to um, channel pairs. That's uh, common. So if I try to route it to uh, channels two, for example, he will always use uh, the, uh, the the smaller channel. In this case, uh, channel one as left channel and channel two as right channel. Uh, there are think of them as pairs. Okay, and that's why if I route it to let's say channel what have you, five, then he will use the pair five and six. Okay, um, um, there is a way to copy the signal, uh, for example, of the aux input um, to channel five and six, and also to channel seven and eight. So you just copy the signal to uh, four channels over here, but you cannot do it manually, that, as far as I know. Uh, so now we have um, routed the left input of the AUX input to um, channel 5, and we've routed the right channel of the AUX input to uh, the right, yeah, right side of the output AUX input to channel 6. Uh, we've split uh, the stereo uh, signal up to uh, to Right. two channels over here, but uh, if we try to make a new connection to the stereo uh, channel, then our old connections here are deleted. 
it's not uh, connected to channel six, uh, five and six anymore. There's a workaround um, for those routing uh, operations, and this is the quick setup uh, sign map. You can see it here. If you uh, click quick setup, you have got a list of uh, things you want to do. Uh, we come to this later, but we are what we are doing now is recording. So just um, use the jog wheel. You see it to select recording. Press press yes, and by now everything is directly routed. Every input is directly routed to the uh, ch channels over here. And um, as you can see, the aux input is routed to channel five and six, but also to channel seven and eight. Okay, um, you can find a very handy diagram if you press Shift and Quick Setup. That gives you the assign map, as you can see here. And over here, you see uh, the routing on the display. So above we have uh, at, at the top we have the inputs, and on the side, no, other way around. At the side we have the input, and at the top we have the channels. And you see that the AUX input uh, is routed to channel five, six, seven, and eight. Uh, there are some uh, inputs we haven't talked about yet, for example, um, the track, the stereo, and the effect. And there are some uh, outputs we haven't discussed yet, for example, the submixer. But, well, we don't need those um, uh, in live mixing, so uh, we we will leave it uh, the way it is by now, okay? Uh, okay, let's talk uh, about the mixing options of every channel. I've got channel 1 selected over here, and you've got the fader pan knob here. If you press it, you get uh, this display where you can see uh, channel 1 and 2 by now. And if I move the fader from channel 1, you see that the display uh, fader moves with it. And you also have uh, the stereo image control on the left side. So now it's uh, turned to the left uh, one, but you can turn it uh, to the left side uh, or to the right, fully right, with a jogging wheel. All those controls are also changeable via MIDI, so you can use an external MIDI fader port to uh, change those uh, values. <clears throat> That's not uh, important as long as you uh, can use those faders on the device too, but there are uh, other settings um, where this might be handy. Uh, if you want to um, get a, ch a stereo image of a channel back to center, there is a workaround in firmware version 2. You just press uh, the shift button and the fader pan button. And uh, you s have you seen it? Uh, then it just uh, puts the fader, uh, no, the, the, the stereo image control of the channel you have selected back to central. Okay, just a little hint. Um, there's nothing uh, very important here. You've got other buttons, for example, the EQ button. Um, you've got an EQ for every channel. Um, on uh, the first thing you recognize here is you can switch the EQ on and off by using the jog wheel. Now the EQ is bypassed, now the uh, EQ is enabled. Uh, and you have got uh, three bands, the low band, low cut or uh, high pass or low boost um, has, a send, has a frequency control. So let's say we have got a, a voice, maybe a, a microphone on channel one, then I would normally um, cut all frequencies beneath uh, 400 hertz. So I use the um, color frequency 400 hertz and I just pull the gain down. And then you've got um, nearly the same thing on the middle EQ. Um, if you've got a voice on your microphone, I normally use uh, frequencies between 1.4 to 1.8. 1.4 might fit to a male voice, while 1.8 might be a, a good uh, frequency um, to boost uh, the a female voice. Yes. But you have to listen uh, to, to your singers and to your PA and what fits and what won't. Um, let's say we use uh, 140 in this uh, example and give it a little more gain. I don't know, something like that. Um, there is a band with um, control for the mid mid uh, frequency. Only the mid frequency has a band with control. And with this um, value, you um, you can control how many frequencies left and right from your center frequency are um, boosted uh, with uh, your gain settings here. So if you've got a very small number here, 
it's not only the frequency 14k that is boosted, but also, I don't know, let's say from 1 to something like 180 or whatsoever uh, in, a, in, a, in a curve. Uh, so, yes. The, the the center frequency gets the, the most boost and the other frequencies are less boosted and if you um take higher higher uh, values here then um uh, only the your center frequencies are very 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 uh, short range um before the center frequency and after the center frequencies are um influenced by the gain settings here so a good way to start is just using the the one volume one that's that should work just try to experiment with it i guess you know how to use the equalizer i don't want to say too much here um there are other um other tutorials on the net where you can find more information about this okay um the high frequency is the same as the low frequency so i for singers i might use a frequency let's say uh, um eight kilohertz and above to just give it a, a bit more headroom uh, everything above 8k is now boosted yeah um okay that's the eq setting um those eq settings are uh, equal to every channel if we take channel 2 channel 3 you see you can uh, change them everywhere uh, of course the uh, stereo um uh, channel 7 and 8 has one equalizer for both channels left and right there is another button that is important. This is a send button over here. With the send button, um, you can choose how and how much of the signal you want to route to the um, other output buses. I haven't told you yet, but um, this device has got four different stereo output buses, four output buses. Some say it five, but I would say it's rather four. From those four output buses, you can, um, no, uh, those four output buses are internally used, but you can route those buses to six physical output jacks on the device, okay? This is the stereo output, uh, the monitor output, and the aux output. Keep in mind that the out aux output and the aux input has nothing in common. They use the same word. That's uh, not so good, I guess. But um, the aux output is a stereo input. The aux, out aux input is a stereo input. The aux output is a stereo output, but they are not connected physically or something. Would be better to use different names for it. Um, the stereo output and the monitor output, output uses XL. No, how you call them RCA jacks, and the aux output uses um, stereo jack, uh, not stereo standard jacks, and the monitor output and your phone's output here are connected. So everything you put uh, out of the monitor output comes out of the phones also. And the monitor output is a special one. This is the only one uh, where you can choose different uh, internal output buses. Um, to route them to the monitor output. Yeah, um, you do this with this function here. We we will see this in a minute. But please uh, let us now stay here uh, on our sense for each channel. So. <clears throat> Um, you've got an effect uh, output bus, bus and you've got an aux output bus. The aux output bus is connected to the aux output here directly. The effect output bus is not connected to any of those outputs. You can, however, um, route it to the monitor output. Like I said, we will come to this a, a bit later. Uh, by now, if we've got uh, channel one selected, um, the first uh, value knob here is uh, the send uh, level. That's why level stands above it. Uh, and you can choose how much of the signal from channel 1 um, will be sent to the effect bus. And although those buses are stereo buses, you have a uh, pan control here too to uh, influence the stereo image on those bus, uh, in, in this bus, on the uh, effect output bus. So by now I uh, would um, send half of my signal gain. No, it's not half. What's... Ah, it's a MIDI value, so half would be 63, I guess, something like that. Um, let's see if we can put it in. There it is. So now we... Uh, 63, 64. Uh, now we send half of our signal to the effect bus. Yes. And there's um, another value here. This is the output master. Yeah. Uh, of the effect bus, um, this output master is not influ is not individually um, individually uh, changeable for every um, channel. 
So if I switch between channel 1 and channel 2, the output master always keeps the same for uh, the effect bus. You can see this there. Okay, there is another uh, important uh, value that you can change. And this is very handy on this device. Both output buses are changeable if they... If you want to kill them, <laughs> then, the, then no signal from channel one is sent to the effect bus. Uh, no, no, no matter how high you will turn the level up. Uh, if you want to use it in pre-fader mode, I was a bit quick here, or in post-fader mode. Okay, let's talk about this for a short time. I guess you know this already, but it's not unimportant. Pre-fader means that the signal of channel one is routed to the uh, effect bus before or in front of the channel fader. So if I um, shut the channel or um, decrease the channel fader here, the signal is still uh, sent to the effect output bus and influenced by this level control. Okay. Um, this is handy if, for example, you use the uh, effect uh, output bus um, to route it to the monitor output and therefore it's connected to your headphones. Now you can hear um, your channel 1 over your headphones no matter um, what you do with the fader. So maybe you don't want to have this instrument on your main PA. It's too loud in the church because it's a cello and the cello is acoustically so loud that you don't need much of, um, of, uh, of a gain here much of level through the PA, but um, I don't know, the keyboarder needs to hear the cello because it's too far away and he uh, uses your headphones, then you can uh, put it the, the level, no, the signal from the cello di directly to the effect bus, from the effect bus to the monitor bus, from there to his headphone, and he always hears the cello in the same uh, volume, with the same volume, no matter what you choose to do with the mixing for the stereo output um, from your for your PA. Yeah. Um, obviously, um, the stereo master um, fader here is directly connected to your stereo out. So that's something you can uh, influence manually here. And um, if you choose to uh, uh, to to use a post fader uh, sending to the effect output bus. That means, like uh, it says, that the signal is not routed in front of the fader, sorry, in front of the fader, but after the fader. And um, that's the opposite way around. If you uh, adjust the level for the stereo output, because you say uh, your uh, cello is just too loud, then it will decrease the sending level to the effect uh, output bus also. Yeah, so the signal passes this fader, goes into the effect uh, bus, and is also influenced by the level fader here. You have got two faders in serial if you want to. This is handy if you use uh, special effects. Let's say you've got um, a little bit of reverb, reverb on um, on the cello, then the direct uh, unreverbed. Can you say this this way? A signal will be passed to the stereo output and you use another uh, signal pass to the effect uh, bus. You can use an effect uh, within the unit. We come to this later. And uh, it will then be pa uh, routed back to the stereo output so that when you turn off the channel, both signals, the direct channel, uh, the direct signal, and the signal through the reverb unit are shut down and it's quiet. You won't hear um, the cello anymore. Uh, if you use uh, a reverb unit in pre-fader, then you would um, turn down the vol volume here and your direct signal will be quiet, but your re reverb signal will still be on... Um, on your main PA, so you hear the cello only with re re reverb, yeah, which would fun sound a bit funny, I guess. Okay, so uh, pre-fader and post-fader settings are possible for both. You see it here for both uh, output buses. Uh, the aux bus here works the same way um, the effect uh, bus works. Uh, in totally, if you use those sends, you've got uh, three. Stereo outputs here. You've got the, the stereo, the effect that you can route to monitor, and the aux bus that can that you can use for the aux output here. Uh, and that is this is pretty handy. You've got six inputs and six outputs, which you can freely route from one to another. Um, that makes this device very, 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 very flexible. 
I think so. Okay, there is another um, internal output bus. It's called the Q bus. We will talk about this later. This bus is needed for your recordings. Um, but uh, if we take a look at the monitor out now, uh, we've got this switching field for uh, the um, signals that we want to route to the monitor out. Um, you can route your stereo signal. In this case, um, the the signal from the main stereo output here does not always comes out of your stereo output, but also on your monitor output and therefore also on your phones. Sandy, uh, if you want to use your phones to listen to your stereo output. Uh, and you can also use the effect sense. This is what I was talking about before. So now the effect uh, bus is sent to the output uh, to the monitor output and it's the same with the aux output now um, the signal of the aux output is copied if you want to say to the monitor output and therefore for your phones and you've got a submix this is something special that we will talk about later the submix isn't really an output bus it's more or less an input bus but uh, we will cover that, uh, this later and you've got the q bus which is important for your recordings um, if you press the q bus and all settings here are overwritten no matter where you what you try to choose here if you you want to say I want to have the uh, effect sense uh, the minute you press the Q bus you will only hear the Q bus and if you um, deselect it you will again hear the effect sense okay um, yeah we will talk about those buses later it's not that important for live mixing for now uh, but they are in inside of this okay yeah, that's how you use it for live mixing. I don't know, have I missed something? Yes, I have. Um, you've got two effect units here also, as you can see. They are built in. It's called effect 1 and effect 2. Effect 1 can be routed to the effect bus. In this case, every signal every signal you route it to the effect bus uh, is coming out of your uh, monitor output because we have rooted it here, and is sent to your effect one. Um, your effect one um, can use, for for example, a, a reverb uh, effect, and the output of the effect, the re reverberation re reverbed signal, can you say it this way, I'm not sure, uh, is sent back to the stereo output, okay? Um, and your effect two, come on, uh, it won't uh, show us uh, this now, Wait a minute. Your effect two is um, uh, can be routed to the AUX bus. So you have the effect bus for effect one. You have the AUX bus for effect two. How can you route them? Just press, for example, effect two and press send at the same time. Now you see if you if we are in the send manual here, both uh, units uh, are lit up. And that means that effect one is uh, for the effect loop. You can see it over there. And um, effect two is sent to, it says effect loop here, but it's, uh, it's the aux loop. Why have they called it this way? I'm not sure. Okay, there are other possibilities to root those effect units. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to tell you much about this uh, right now. Um, it's better to make a new video just for the effect units. Uh, but as, as you have seen, if you press the effect units, you have uh, your controls here, uh, kinds of effects you can use. Those are uh, Hull uh, effects. And uh, if you use, wait a minute, uh, if you, um, oh, the, you've got different Hull reverb effects here. Uh, if you uh, click yes or no, for example, yes, you can choose other uh, other um, effects. Yes, you see it. It even has a very good pitch shifter. It's usable. You've got chorus, delay, flange, or phaser whatsoever, and you've got uh, reverb and gate and plate and ambience and um, some presets here that you can quickly use for your effect units. And um, you can also, of course, uh, make your own presets and um, store it under user user um, presets. That's what the safe settings here are for. Okay, we don't want to go into deep uh, into too deep here. It's the same on effect uh, two. Um, you've got uh, the same uh, algorithms for the effects here, as long as you route those units to your um, buses to your. <clears throat> effect or aux buses. Okay, let's talk about uh, other options to use the effect uh, units over here. 
Those other options are written on the top. You can see it here. Um, uh, let's start with effect two. You see on top that uh, you can use effect two as a channel dynamics. What does this mean? This means that the effect two is able to provide every channel, every channel with its own compressor. Okay, so to use it as a compressor, you just um, press the effect button and you may know uh, this already, you push the, the left button of the channel that you want to equip with an, oh, this one stereo linked, you've seen, uh, that you want to um, to use with an um, with an, uh, stereo compressor here. Okay, uh, if you uh, press the effect now, you see that it's rooted to all those channels. Can you see it? Uh, this one hasn't worked because it was stereo linked and I relinked re it and then it loses its connection. Okay, but now you see that every um, channel has a compressor. Uh, if you press the uh, effect uh, bottom again, you see the um, the values of the compressor for channel one now, for example. So you've got the threshold, you can adjust the attack time, you can of course adjust the ratio and the post gain after the compressor, and you can switch it on, uh, on and off over here. Uh, that's kind of handy if you want to bypass it. And those effects are now a pre-fader, of course. You should use uh, a channel compressor, I guess, always pre-fader. Um, and there is no way to use it post fader, not on. Yeah, I'm right. Not on the effect two. Okay, so um, this unit provides you with an um, with an compressor for every channel. Yeah, the the other option is um, to use it as a stereo dynamics. You see it here. In this case, you just push the uh, effect two button and you push the stereo out bus over here. So now. Um, you've got a stereo compressor on your stereo bus. How can you find it? If you use the home button over here, nope. if you use, where is it? Where can I get to the, uh, to the stereo? Uh, you just push the, put the, push the stereo button over here. Now you've got the display of um, the stereo output bus. And you see over here that there is a dynamic uh, activated which is the effect two now. If you press it again, you should be able to adjust whether it's post stereo, uh, post, yeah, post stereo out fader here, or it's pre fader. Let's do it again and you can see it. Now it's, uh, it's off, offline, you can say so. Now it's pre fader. And if you push it again, uh, like I said, effect two and stereo uh, button together, it's post fader. Okay. Um, <coughs> And uh, once we are in this display, you can also use the jog wheel here to uh, control whether the output here is stereo or uh, it, uh, the stereo output bus uh, uh, is, uh, contains the signal of track 5 and 6, uh, 1 and 2, or 3 and 4. Where is it? Are the stereo, the stereo output 1 and 2, 3 and 4, 5 and 6. Or seven and eight. Uh, if you use those uh, values, you can use the stereo output bus as a group bus for our um, channel pairs. Okay, might be handy if you say, okay, I want to send uh, those uh, <coughs> those two channels to a separate output. You can use the stereo bus for this. And in this case, you all uh, you also use the um, uh, the compressor. Uh, effect two in our case as a group compressor for those two outputs. No, not now, but no, <laughs> this would be the case. Okay, um, that is effect two. Effect one only has one other option uh, than to route it to our sense. Might still be rooted there. That's a, that's a fact. It's uh, now rooted to the effect loops. That's what we have done before. And you can also use this as a channel multi effect. What does that mean? Well, uh, let's assume that uh, we use uh, the input four uh, with an electric guitar. So you just switch the little switch over here to guitar. You plug in your e guitar here. Uh, you give it some gain. And now we can uh, the uh, route the input D. Let's say to our uh, channel 4 over here, 
Um, but you then find out that your electric guitar just is clean. No effects, no overdrive, no nothing. Uh, if you want to change this, for example, you use the effect 1 and um, use it as an insert effect on channel 4 here. So now the effect the effect 1, have you done? Yeah. Uh, only, uh, only influences the channel 4. What can you do? Uh, you've got four different effects that uh, you can use in series, one after another. First one is compression for channel 4. The other one, if you use the phasers here, is distortion. There is another one for gate, and in our case here, you have a flanger and you have a re reverb. So it's uh, obviously it's five different effects. Which is pretty handy. Uh, now you have uh, like like five different stomp boxes for e guitar. You have those ones in digital uh, inside of the unit here. Uh, if you push whoop, the, your yes button again, you got a list of uh, different configurations um, that you can use to have different of those uh, five effects. For example, here's much of distortion. You can also use it as an EQ with uh, flanger and reverb over here, uh, parametric EQ, you can also use it as uh, stereo exciter, uh, shimmer verb, and something like those are um, presets with different settings. Maybe we will use shimmer verb, why not? Uh, we just press yes again to choose it, and then you see that the shimmer verb contains a compressor, a gate, an EQ, a pitch, yeah, like I said, the pitch is pretty handy here. You can use it. It's not uh, totally bad. <laughs> and a reverb uh, with some pre-values that uh, are already inside of it. You can We can click a few through it, but um, you see that the EQ setting uh, contains one EQ band where you can adjust the frequency, the center frequency, the gain settings, and the output level. Uh, so it's not totally... It's not a it's not an, uh, a great EQ over here, just one frequency. Okay, here you've got the pitch options. Uh, you can uh, you can here adjust how many half tones you should pitch the signal. So this is one octave, for example, and you've got a fine tuning he over here. That's uh, I don't know percent, yeah percent, fifty percent up, fifty percent down, and a stereo balanced if you want to have the pitched signal on another. Uh, on another stereo image channel, so to call it. Okay, if you choose the effect unit 1 as a channel inside effect, for example, uh, on a channel 4 by now, you can uh, like uh, you can push the select button of the channel and the uh, um, unit 1 button again to choose whether the inset effect um, is rooted uh, before, say, pre-fader, before the master fader, or the, not the master fader, the channel fader, or, like in our case now, post fader so now the effect units will be added uh, after the level fader okay and if you push it again uh, it's out of the signal way now it's off and now it's pre fader and now like this led uh, tells you it's post fader it's the same um the same way like we have seen it on the effect 2 with the stereo bus you remember um so this LED shows you whether those effect units are rooted in pre- or post-fader mode. That might be important here. Yeah. Uh, the last thing I want to show you is, of course, the solo function. This uh, enables a single, uh, a single um, channel over here um, to be rooted to your headphone. So just press solo and, of course, press the select button. Now uh, channel 1 will... Uh, come out of your headphone over here. No matter where this uh, this um, uh, this routing function here um, is uh, is pointed to, um, the solo function always overrides everything over here, like the Q button does. As long as your solo um, button uh, LED lights are up, um, you cannot choose your input device for your headphone or for your monitor output. Uh, yeah, it uses always the channel you have selected here, and of course you can select m multiple channels. I don't know, let's take this one for example. Um, there is one thing that's a bit annoying, if you want to deselect those, you cannot just push the solo button, but you have to deselect every channel individually. That's a bit annoying, but you get used to it. So far, I hope um, that helps you to use uh, this device as a live mixer. In the next video, we will talk about um, recording.
finally <laughs> there's uh, take care of um, this video because there's one thing you need to know if you have routed your inputs to your faders over here to your to your channels and uh, routed them to the stereo output and on the stereo output you have your pa and everything's fine and you make a sound check and every sound thing sounds awesome you've already um used your EQs and whatnot, uh, everything's fine. And then when you start playing, when uh, the show starts, you say, hey, I want to make a, a quick recording of what we're playing now. You, so you um, make every uh, channel record ready. And while you're playing, you press a record and play to make a recording. In this case, all your channels are not rooted to your stereo output, but rooted to your Q bus. We haven't talked about the Q bus yet. I don't want to do this at this point. Please take a look at the next video. But keep in mind that once you start an uh, an recording, um, your stereo output output will not contain the the signals from your channels over here. Uh, so in a live situation, everything's prepared. You press record to record your um, your, your your show for example, and then you finally find uh, find out that there, nothing comes out of your speaker, everything's muted and you don't know why. This is really tricky. There is a workaround um, to um, use the recording settings while you also use this um, device as a live mixing device, but we will talk about this in the next video. I hope that helps. Um, if you have any other questions, just write it in the comments. I will try to give you an answer as soon as I can. Okay, now that you've done all your settings, all your routings, all your mixing, all your EQing, all your values, uh, all your settings for your effect units, uh, your routings to your output buses, buses um, it uh, would be uh, useful to save the, your project to save your settings over here. There are different ways to do this. The common way would be to save the whole song. So a song contains all your values, all your routings, and of course, um, all your tracks that you might have recorded. We haven't recorded yet, but if you do recordings, you can every, everything is um, saved within a song. Obviously, to save a song, you just uh, put menu, uh, push manual, uh, menu. So uh, you go to song, Press yes over here, and on the top you find whoop at the bottom, you find save. Okay, push save, and now it automatically uh, saves everything. Um, the other way uh, to save a song is to uh, use the uh, eject shut button over here. Uh, then you have to um, to agree. Um, this uh, shut button uh, is used to shut the unit down. Uh, if you're still using a hard disk, for example, the old hard disks need to be parked so that they won't be damaged during transportation. And I guess this uh, option uh, is built in to park the hard disk drive. You don't need to park a SD drive uh, like we use uh, here, but uh, if you use the eject shut button, uh, then before you, uh, if you use it before you power off the unit, then it will save all your settings and everything you've done in the uh, song that is uh, opened uh, now. So, now you got a message, please power off. If you, if you power off now, the unit is shut down. If you don't do this, there's no way to go back. <laughs> okay, because your hard drive is parked, so you have to shut down the unit. Uh, the other option to uh, save your settings, your routings, for example, is to use to use the routing library. The routing library uh, is used to copy uh, routings from one song to another, for example. But <clears throat> if you use the routing library to save your routings, it only saves your hardware routing, so um, the routing of your uh, of your channels, for example. It does not um, save your EQ settings, it does not save your send settings, uh, uh, it does not save your uh, effect settings, except uh, the routings of the, accept, uh, of the effect units. So, you find uh, the routing library over here if you just press the quick um, setup button and um, like you go down in the list, you have the routing library over here, Press yes, and now you've got uh, several routings that you can load. Load, but over here you can save uh, routings, uh, the routing that you you're working with. So we press yes again, and then uh, our settings, our routing settings, only our routing settings are stored to routing one. Uh, we can um, use uh, the scene library over here. The scene library is bigger 
uh, saves more than the routing library. In the scene library, everything, all your settings we've talked about uh, so far are uh, stored within the device. And you can use 128, I guess, uh, scene, uh, scene settings within a song. So if you uh, want to use this option, you can um, use your routing settings uh, in every song that you will create later on. Maybe you say, okay, I don't want to use the the song I've I've used uh, last week because um, then uh, all my recording that I'll do uh, in the church, for example, will be put into the same song. I want to make a new song for the for uh, for every week, but I want to use the old um, routing and value settings. Then it would be best to use the scene library to uh, save all things we've done so far in a scene. Um, you can do it in the same way. Just um, Choose a scene library over here, press yes, go to save. Now um, there is an opportunity to rename your scene. You can also rename your routing, uh, your, your routing library uh, by just um, pushing shift over here and pushing the menu button again. Then you will use the title option. You can see it beneath the menu. And in this case, um, you have the opportunity to choose uh, to rename uh, your n your 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 name um, with a jog wheel. Uh, there are a few clever tricks here. If you use the up and down buttons, you can choose if you want to use uh, capital letters, small letters, uh, numpad means um, numbers, for example. And there is another tricky thing. You have got a list of user words in here. If you use that, you can uh, use uh, special words that are inside the unit unit already, or you can even add your own words uh, so that your renaming is much faster. I, for example, had, um, yes, has built this word it's called test kill me. So I know when I see this library, uh, okay, this is this was just for test purposes and you don't need to use it in a real session. Uh, so I choose this one, just press yes. Now it's renamed. And if I press yes again, now it's saved. That's all. Uh, okay, uh, maybe we take a short look, look how to uh, establish those user words. You choose the menu again, you go to the button, options, press yes, and over there at the bottom you find user words, and here you have all those words we have seen before, and of course at the end you, can, uh, you have empty uh, spaces where you can put in your own word. Where's mine? I can find it now. It's at the bottom, I think over there. If you, if you take a, a new one, maybe this one, you can just rename it by pressing shift and title again. And uh, yeah, type in with a jogging wheel over here a, a new name, for example. Okay, so far, um, so the only way to name a song or to, 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 uh, is uh, uh, the moment when you create a new one. As far as I know, I haven't found any other uh, opportunities, uh, options in the manual. So once you create a new song, you can use the shift and uh, title option, shift menu, title option, to give the song a new name. That's the only possibility. Once you have uh, give the song a new name, um, let's call it song three, why not? Uh, it, it will make uh, a new song. You can also use the uh, resolution of the song. You can switch between 16-bit and 27-bit. Uh, um, this depends on how much uh, space on your SD card the song or your recordings will take, of course. After you press yes, um, he makes a new song, which is totally empty in our case, uh, with uh, the new name. And if you now make your adjustments and what uh, here you see it, and if you now make your adjustments and you save the song later, it will be so uh, saved under the name song zero uh, zero three. So um, this is something that's, that's important to keep in mind. If you um, start a new project, if you start a new gig, a new show, whatsoever, the first thing you should do is to create a new song for this session for this project. Otherwise, you, sp uh, you save everything to um, the last song that you've used because you always opens the last song that you've used when you power up the device. Okay? All right, here we go. Thank you for watching. In the description, you'll find the links to the owner manuals in different languages. They are still online on the Tuscam homepage. And furthermore, you'll find a link to a, let's call, routing schematic, 
um, that gives you a great overview about all the routing options in this device. I know it's a bit difficult to understand, but uh, with the help of this video, I guess it will help you to remind uh, to remember all the things we've talked about so far. Um, and in the next video, we'll talk about recording. Finally, there's much more to discover. Um, so yeah, stay tuned. Maybe we'll see us there. Bye bye.